Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous where last time we uh, we made a big decision about our uh, future. We decided to keep the powers that Arilu gave us uh, despite Iomede's warnings. So we are still in Aeon. We saw the powers of the Aeon. And then uh, we had a lot of dialogue with uh, all the people of Dresden. Um, not all the people of Dresden, but with some people in Dresden. And we've got our city back. People have uh, repopulated it. And our Aeon powers are going off the rails here. And we're able to see everybody's crimes and sins. We saw liars and thieves all over the place. Um, yeah, but right now we are going to go around. We're going to talk to everybody, see if anybody has anything new to say. Uh, and then we'll have to decide what we're going to do next. I think we're going to do the Hell Knight God quest speak. next. But uh, you never know. You never know what might happen. Uh, you're still here, Mr. Garms. Quartermaster Garms welcomes you with a happy smile. What an unexpected surprise. The commander himself came back from the abyss to lend us a hand. The soldier looks ready to squeeze you in a bear hug, like a long-lost prodigal, prodigal son. Lilso pr produces a small figurine out of his pocket. You were gone for a long time, but we never gave up on our commander. Look at this knick-knack we made. One of the soldiers was good, was good with a knife and carved it from a block of wood. And then another, a wizard, enchanted it. We let it travel from one pair of hands to another every night, and each soldier that held it prayed for your soul, no matter what which god they believe in. The priest, the priest says that their prayers have been heard, and this little trinket is now holy. You did come back, so please take it. This is a gift from us all. Well, thank you, Wilzer. You should keep it. May it protect you instead. A gift to your commander? Sounds like insubordination to me. <laughs> what? Uh, thank you, well, sir. Commander Figurine. The quartermaster humbly lowers his gaze. No, thank you for accepting my gift. So much you got. Anything new? You can have all this stuff. Oh shit! Yeah, we're 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 loaded now, so we can uh, really take a look at this stuff. Gleaming banded armor. Uh, fire resistance thirty. Immunity immunity to sleep, electricity, and paralysis. That's kind of awesome. Bastard sword there. Icy burst keen cold iron bastard sword. Plus three. What a what a title. What a name. Doesn't look like you have too many named weapons. New ones anyway. I actually would not be able to tell you if they're new or not. I think double jeopardy isn't new. I think I remember that one. Um No, I think you've got just about the same stuff you've you've always had. So I'm not going to worry myself too much about that stuff, but uh, you can have... What do we want to give you? We don't have anybody using picks. Despite this one being a really cool one. So you can have that. I'm going to hold on to this because I really like this. So we're going to hold on to that too. You can have that. That and that. Retriever's Claw. Ruthless Assault. You can have those. You can have all of those. And all of those. And, oh, this is the one that was cool. Damage equal to its AC. Yeah, that one's kind of cool. But we don't have anybody that uses picks. It'd be cool to make, like, a dwarf and just have, like, a... He was a miner. That'd be kind of neat. I guess you don't need to be a dwarf. Maybe that's a bit stereotypical of me to assume that all dwarves would be miners. Or all miners would be dwarves. But, uh, still. I think out of all the races, you would associate mining with dwarves. No offense, Greyborn. Uh, we'll keep with the rest of that for now. Spellbreaker. Why aren't we using this one? Saving those in evocation. My current shield must be really good if I'm not using that. I have all these full plates. Ah, uh, so much junk. I wish we would just sell these automatically. That'd be great. Twenty-nine rings of protection. My God, there is Stevanius's ring. We're gonna have to figure out all well, these ring of protections as well. We'll keep the plus threes just in case. I don't think we'll ever need them, but just in case. Don't need the plus twos anymore. I don't think anyway. Deal. 
God, we are rich. We are rolling in, in wealth. Oh. That's not nine, is it? No, we don't want that one. Get out of here. Quiver of Sacred Vengeance. Uh, it can shoot up to 38. This ammunition hits the first enemy as well as two additional enemies, each of which must be within 15 feet of the primary target. It deals an additional 1d6 holy damage. It could be good. The main issue I'm having with the quivers... Well, actually, those quivers probably don't do that, right? I'm going to buy one. Why not? We're rich. We've got the money. Don't want to buy anything in here? No. I was thinking that I'd only get, like, one arrow. Like the midnight bolt. But I think it's it said at 30 shots, right? We, we're going to burn through that really fast. But it might be good for a uh, an encounter or two. Oh, can I just take your, your stuff? Oh, thank you. Nice of you. You guys got anything new? Gleaming Amulet of Clarity. It's actually kind of cool. Uh, this ring get, get plus five competence bonus on persuasion checks. And grants their companions a plus one morale bonus on all skill checks. Eh. Not too impressed by that. Source of Dividing Power. A chest piece. The wearer of this robe uses a divine power to summon a creature. They can choose to give the creature's attacks either holy or unholy special abilities. Uh, where this is hit on an enemy, lands a hit on an enemy first time in a round. Must pass a fortitude save or be partially skinned. Holy crap. Those who fail to save become staggered and take two points of constitution drain per, per round for 1d4 rounds. And gloves of the ambassador. Plus five the world, plus five to persuasion, and plus two to charisma. Not anything I feel like I need right now. Uh, Darren, I'm not planning to do anything evil to you. Inquisitor Lyotur has learned about the the other and is preparing a trap for them and for you. Oof. Man, I don't know what we're gonna do about that one. If I'm being honest, should we tell him? I mean, we don't want to lie, right? But at the same time, the other might not be somebody we want here. Critic, you've survived and you're still here. Welcome. Sniffing the air and then twitching his ears in response to something nearby, Critic whispers, Shh, can you hear them rustling? I've acquired some new neighbors recently, a pack of rats. Do you know anything about rat extermination? If you do, I could use your advice. You're, you're a kobold, you should be fine. Uh, I'll, I'll do what I can. Long story short, a pack of local rats has declared war on me. First, they just stole my supplies, so I drove them away with some poison and rat traps. Then, those cunning rascals started terrorizing me, chewing through my beautiful new boots. That made me really angry. Critic's voice grows harder and rougher. So I tamed a few guard lizards. Kobolds used them instead of cats. And I made myself an army, and then I declared my own righteous rat- radical- <laughs> rat- raticidal- crusade uh now i'm wondering what the rat's next moves will be move will be the kobold hisses aggressively his yellow teeth flashing in a predatory grin just imagine you're the rat king let's call you hmm well to keep it simple let's call you rat scary and one day a horrible stranger invades your domain an invincible kobold a rat a raticidal crusader with a whole army of guard lizards at his command what would you do Krennic releases a bloodthirsty hiss, and his veneer of civility peels away instantly. The creature standing before you now is a hungry and vicious beast. You're not really talking about rats now, are you? Krennic stares at you baffled. What else could I mean? Of course I'm talking about rats. I would take my pack somewhat someplace else. I would stealthily ter terrorize you until you decided to look for a new home. I would challenge you to a battle and come to deal with you personally. I'm not wasting my time on this nonsense. I would probably challenge him and come personally. The kobold grins approvingly and nods. Yes, now you're getting somewhere. The raticidal crusade really has become a personal matter for me, a true vocation. Naturally, I would never turn down a challenge. Instead, I would jump at the bait and run straight to the heart of the rat king's lair. But if I fail, that's it. My crusade's over, and without me around, all my lizards can do is flee in terror. Krennic grins maliciously, and then he sweeps his palm across his face, seemingly wiping away his ominous expression and restoring his usual calm and slightly sarcastic demeanor. Oh, it seems I got a little carried away. Please, I need a rat. Perhaps I need a rest. You must be thinking to yourself now, Krennic, just how stupid you are. 
Why do you keep or pestering me with your idiotic questions? Start being useful already. Fine. I'll start being useful right now. A piece of paper covered with Sarkorian symbols appears in the kobold's hand. It has come to my knowledge that in the city of Iz, there is an ancient temple with a library full of valuable scrolls. The demons have probably, probably already destroyed most of them, but the priests have a hiding place marked with these two symbols. Check it out if you have time. Where do you get this information from? I just don't rem I just don't understand why you're asking this question when it's obvious that you won't like the answer. Fine. A friend told me. Satisfied now? I'll try to find that hiding spot. Do that. You might get lucky. Krennic's shoulders sag suddenly, as if under an invisible weight. His scales lose their luster, making him look a decade older. You've listened carefully, and by now you must be asking yourself where I get my information from. Yeah, I just asked you that, Krennic. And you've likely guessed by now. After my tribe was crushed, I wandered alone for a long time. I had many adventures during those dark days. Will you tell me? Tiredness rings in Krennic's voice. After my tribe was defeated, I was left alone. There was no one left to save, and I outlined two main goals for myself. The first was revenge. Revenge on everyone who had doomed my tribe to extinction. As long as my heart kept beating, I would seize every chance I could to do them harm. My second goal was to destroy the Night Ruby's contract with the devils, which dooms my soul and the souls of my kin to rotten hell. The contract remained my only property, but even without a single coin in my pocket, I was still a decent spy. I collected information about the Drow and gave it to their enemies. I helped the Devil's, slave, devil's slaves rebel. Then I gave away the devil, Devil's secrets to the demons. Yes, demons. Everyone I collaborated with was disgusting, but the demons seemed to be trying to be even more vile than the rest. Using them was easy, but I always wanted to scrub my soul clean with soap afterward. So, I pitted my enemies against each other and knew that, sooner or later, someone would come, for, come after me. But I was lucky. My network of agents grew bigger as the information I collected became more and more dangerous, just like myself. It was dirty work. Once, when I was pitting a dark cult of Dahaks of Dahak followers against devils, I doomed an entire group of innocents to death. As they were dying on the altars, I stayed in the shadows, listening to the chants of Dahak and recalling the Night Ruby's glory days. One thought plagued me. Maybe we deserved everything that we had to, to endure. It might be the case. Yes, I had to do a lot of bad things, but in the end, I got what I wanted. The pact with hell turned and turned to ashes, and I watched. I felt happy and empty inside. Now what? Do I go home, or do I throw myself in into the nearest chasm? Then I decided that I would keep on fighting, no longer for the sake of my tribe, but for the sake of everyone. I'm going to fight against any attempt by the lower planes to interfere in our lives. I am no king or hero, of course. I'm just a spy. But sometimes a single spy can do more than a hundred kings. That's why I'm here. Who knows? Maybe I'm paying down the debt of the Night Ruby tribe. I hope that someday I'll pay off and pay them off in full. Now you know my whole story. Huh. It's kinda cool. I really like Critic. I've got suspicions about you. Here we go. I come in friendship and right away I'm distrusted. You asked me what I would do if I was left on my own. Did you know that Galfrey was going to relieve me of command and send me to the Abyss? Of course. Didn't you Didn't you know that the Queen holds regular meetings with her Kobold Council to discuss all important matters? Believe it or not, I am the honorary chairman of the board. Krennic giggles. Are you joking? How could I know such a thing? Hmm. I'm nothing to say just yet. I have to go. Good luck. I believe you'll need it. So he probably doesn't like the idea that I am, uh, you know, a Hell Knight. And working with devils, huh? Or, I guess I'm not really working with devils, but I would work with devils if they asked me to. I guess I'm kind of working with my lies. Is this a new place? Oh, I thought I could go in there. It's this I can go into. We haven't been in here in a while. Let's see if there's anything new. Alright, let's see. What do we got here? I saw something. Confiscating all these goods for the crusade. We are low on supplies. We need this. Thank you all. Plus, you know, I don't think anybody's been living in there since we got here. Alright. Let's head over to the other side. I don't. Is there anybody over there? No. There's some loot, though. Uh, do we need to talk to you? 
I guess we'll, we'll... Do you have anything new? Hi, Commander. Or hail, Commander. Nope. Good luck on the front lines. Thank you. Let us press on. Take this loot. It's my spiral shell. Uh, let's see if there's anything on this side. Maybe it'll pop up as we go over here. We nope. Ahead. Okay. What is this? Is, is that me? Who's that? I'm going to say it's me. It doesn't look like me, but I'm going to say it's me anyway. Thank you guys for erecting that in my honor. Uh, Lady Konomi. Almost begrudgingly looks away from her letter and gives you a polite nod. Commander. Yeah, yeah, you don't like me. I know. I know. All right. We're going to go to the tavern. We're going to talk to Arushale, who probably wants to go, who wants us to go into the, her dream with her once more. The Half Measure Tavern. Hi, Fi. How you doing? Greetings, Barrett. Oh, he doesn't call me Commander. I'm always welcome here. I better be. Arushale? Rishley looks at you and smiles sadly without saying a word. Let's go to your dream. Let's do it. I can't wait to finally solve this riddle. Oh, but there's... A glimpse of concern appears on Succubus's eager face. My nightmare. It's still in there. Usually he doesn't show up at all, but I think he will attack us when we start altering the very nature of my dream. Better be ready. Better get ready for battle. I'm ready. Rishley touches your hand and the real world fades around you. What do you dream of? Visit Arushale's dream. This nightmare better be ready. I am a powerful Aeon. Arushale's dream seems even darker and emptier than before. The smell of smoke and ash lingers in the cold air. You can't see the nightmare, but you can feel it watching you from the dark. The succubus approaches the table reverently, as if approaching a holy altar. Then she hesitates. When Desna asks me, what do you dream of? I didn't know anything about dreams. I've been trying to imitate mortals, but I never but I never really understood what I was doing. I filled my dreams with so many things, but now I understand why they all burned up, burned so easily. They were not real dreams, but how should I put it? Mortals don't actually dream about objects. They dream about ideas. Filling my dreams with filling my dreams with those items was like stealing a roadside from a from a stake and then claiming I had an entire town in my hands. Anevia isn't really dreaming about a loaf of bread. Her dream is about a whole new life. A life where there's no war. A life where she lives in her own house and bakes bread for her beloved. I'm sure that if I asked anyone about this about the things I stored here, they'd tell me why those things are in the dream world are in their dream worlds. In the worlds where they find happiness. The worlds where they find happiness. Did Anevia's words give you any ideas about how to find your own dream? They did. Almost. Maybe. I hope so. We'll find out soon enough. This table didn't burn because it's part of my true dream. A part of the world where I am happy. Now I just have to find out what this world looks like. Rushley closes her eyes. The world of my dreams is so close. I can almost see it. Almost. A teapot is on the table. Rushley whispers quietly. You can barely hear her words. But as she speaks, the world changes around you. The smell of smoke and ash is replaced by the fragrant aroma of freshly brewed tea. I didn't even see the nightmare over there. Damn, that's creepy. The tea cups are full, and steam is rising from them. There's a there's a spot of spilled jam. Cookie crumbs. I must have baked cookies. Ooh. Nightmare spawn. Plenty to drink some tea. A hissing voice full of bitter hatred can be heard in the darkness. You used to drink souls before. How many living souls did you kill, you fiend? How many did you torture to death? You don't deserve a life like this. I've done many terrible things. Arushle's voice is quiet but firm. I've ruined many lives, and I'll be paying for that as long as I live. I will fight until we close the world wound, and even after that, as long as there is evil on Galarian. But I will not give up my I will not give up on my dream. Whatever it is, without it, I won't have the strength to fight. I'll make you pay with your life. Oh, multiple nightmares. That's not good. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot of nightmares. Oh, Jesus. Oh, 
well, damn, Arujale. <laughs> and I get the last one. Cool. Just, you know, she she wants me to help. <laughs> Arujale stops to catch her breath. These nightmares will never leave me alone. I know that I deserve them, but it's so hard to fight them off over and over again. But there's truth to your nightmares. Are you feeling all right? You cannot have dreams without nightmares. They are the price you must pay for your humanity. Yes, I know. Thank you for helping me fight them off. Let's continue. Arushale closes her eyes again. Surrounded at the table, I see a house. A large, spacious kitchen. A ray of sunlight coming in through the window. The branches of apple trees swaying outside. Oh, this is a nice place. I like that fireplace. You want to have a house of your own, my venomous butterfly? Damasio's charred, ghostly face is twisted with hatred. You deprived me of my home twice. First you took Elysium from me, then I found myself a new refuge in the abyss. But you destroyed that too, and now you dare to dream of a house of your own? I have wronged you badly, and I feel guilty. I am not trying to make excuses. There is nothing I could say that would excuse what I have done. But you are dead, Damasio. I will never forget you, but I will not let you take my life. You don't have the right to live. Oh, more of them. Oh, and this time they get to go first. You guys can't touch me. Disappear. Jesus, Arushle. Arushle looks pale as she wipes away the sweat and tears from her face. You're so close to finding your dream. You're almost there. This is nightmare. Yeah, no, you're so close. Yes, I want to see it through to the end. A kitchen, a teapot on the table, and who's sitting at the table? Look, that's that's me. There you are. And there's you. We're chatting, laughing. You, you're holding my hand with such tender affection. Damn right I am. From across the table. So this is my dream. All this time, my dream has been about you. About a house that we could call our own. About friendship. No, about love. And maybe even a family. Family. Isn't that the word, the word mortals use to describe the people who fill them with happiness? The people they love and can't live without? You can't be happy, you scum. You don't deserve happiness. The nightmare's hiss grows into a deafening roar. I will be happy. She looks, at, she looks the monster straight in the eye. Do whatever you want to me, but my dreams are mine forever. Stand with me. Guys, you don't... Oh my god, look at them all. Those initiative checks. Hey. Not allowed to hit me. Strike as one. Here they come. They're all gonna line up for a nice cleave attack from Arushale. I like how at dinner there, I'm just, I still got my helmet on and my, and my armor. I'm just ready to go at all times. You never know. The food might attack us. There we go. The monster is gone and all is peace once more. Peaceful once more. I just want to live here in the world of mortals with you. I have solved the goddess's riddle. This is my true dream. The smell of freshly baked cookies wafts through the air. The, the steam rises from the cups of hot, fragrant tea that have been set on the table. Urshula gazes around her, her lovingly. You have never seen her so happy. I love you. Will you be with me? Will you share my dream? Urshula's slender body is bathed in a kaleidoscope of color. And for a moment, she's completely surrounded by hundreds of butter fluttering bo blue butterflies. She stares at you with shining eyes. The transformation is complete. The demon is no longer a demon. The former succubus has been forgiven by the goddess and cleansed of her past sins. You watch as Arushale's criminal aura fades away. Oh shit. What's going on? What happened to you? How do you feel? A home together. I would fight the entire abyss to make this dream come true. I don't know if we'll ever have a home of our own. 
But wherever we wind up, in a castle or in a leaky tent, we'll be together. Forgive me, Arushale. I am sincerely happy that you're free, but we can't be together. Damn, that'd be harsh. That would be so harsh. Fuck. <laughs> what's going on? What happened? What's happening to you? Freedom. Finally, after all these years, I can feel it. The Abyss has released me from its clutches. I have solved Desna's riddle and have found my dream. I have found you. I am not a monster anymore. I can no longer see your criminal aura. You have been forgiven by Desna and are now innocent in the eyes of justice. So Desna has forgiven all my sins. I... I don't deserve such happiness. But still, I know that I've only taken the first steps on the path of redemption. This journey will last a lifetime. Her voice sounds stronger, I feel like. Maybe that's just my imagination, but... Rushley hurriedly wipes away a tear as it runs down her cheek. How do you feel? I've never felt better. Everything that I hated about myself is gone. I look at you and I don't feel hunger. I don't want to kill. All the unholy cravings I experienced as a demon, they're all gone. Now I just want to be happy. To live and to love. So your touch no longer drains the life from others? No. I am not a monster anymore. Not a predator. Not a weapon. Just a woman. Like any other female mortal. We well, still got wings, so... I guess there are other mortals with wings, but, you know, it's a little different. Uh, Rishle looks down at her slender fingers. Slowly, apprehensively, she reaches out to touch you. You feel the warmth of her skin as she gently strokes your hand. She looks at you timidly. Her trembling lips are parted slightly, and her breath is uneven. You know exactly what she wants, and what she is afraid to say. A home together. I would fight the entire abyss to make this dream come true, or I don't know if we'll ever have a home of our own, but wherever we wind up, in a castle or in a leaky tent, we'll be together. Hmm. I like both of them. I feel like number four might be a little... I kind of, I don't know, like I'm already planning on fighting the entire abyss in a sense, right? I guess not the entire abyss, it's only Baphomet and, and Discari. I'm going to go with number five. I don't know if we'll ever have a home together, but wherever we wind up, we'll be together. Yes. Who knows how and when this war will end, or what lies ahead of us. But you and I will face every twist of fate together. Kiss Arushale. Oh, I'm dead. Sorry, I didn't mean to ruin the moment. This is really good. Her lips tremble slightly, but she returns her kiss eagerly. She's being careful, gentle, trying not to hurt you. However, when she realizes that you remain unharmed, her, timid her timidity gives way to desire. The former succubus has long shown incredible restraint, suppressing her passions for years. But now, as her lips meet yours, she holds nothing back. The scent of flowers hang heavy in the air, and a jubilant melody fills your ears. Ursula kisses you again and again as she whispers. And I do believe we have made our decision in terms of our romance. Sorry, Galfrey. That's really good, though. I'm really happy with that. And the fact that, you know, she's no longer got the criminal aura... That's like so, I don't know, I feel like that's like the pinnacle of what it means to be sort of a, an arbiter an arbiter of justice and stuff. Is to not just punish a criminal for their deeds, but to redeem them of their wrongdoings and turn them to a life of justice and righteousness. You know, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's more of a lawful good thing, but I guess lawful good is still Aeon-ish. Alpha neutral is more of an Aeon, but you know, I think, I think it fits for Baird, especially you know considering his relationship with the Richelieu. 
The dream world fades away, but Rouge lays still in your arms. The kiss you shared in the dream now continues in reality. She presses up against you, and you can feel the heat of her body beneath her clothes. <laughs> Do you want more? <laughs> Uh, touch Arushle's shoulders. Now you can do whatever you want. Take Arushle to your private study. Let's go somewhere where no one will bother us. Oh boy. Um. Hmm. Do you want more? I don't know about that question. <laughs> it's kind of... Now you can do whatever you want. Yeah, let's do that one. Touch Urshle's shoulder. Now you can do whatever you want. Oh. Urshle's whole body shivers with expectation at your touch. You feel the heat of her fingers as she intertwines them with your own. Alright, let's go somewhere no one will bother us. Let's, let's get out of here. Yes. Let's go. She squeezes your hand firmly. There we go. Oh. Are you just going to hang out in my bedroom now? That's fine. This is too wonderful. I, I think I'm about to cry now. Oh, man. Was I that bad? I, it was wonderful. It was so wonderful. Okay. I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, 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 let's go. Awesome. So we have... Ooh. And we leveled up from that. Man, that must have been one hell of a... Hell of a night. <laughs> Alright. Um, what did we... Where did it... Where, did we want to be a tactical leader? I think... We're going to keep going with it. But I do still feel like we should probably respect and go with Stalwart Defender. If I'm being honest. But we're going to keep going going with it for now. See where we... See where, see where it leads us. Um, what do we get this one? We get teamwork feet. Uh, Inquisitor gains a bonus feat in addition to those gained from normal advancement. These bonus feats must be selected from teamwork. I do like these. I do like this aspect of the tactical leader getting all these teamwork feats. And then at third level, ninth level, and eighth level, a tactical leader gains a teamwork feat as a bonus feat. Mm hmm. Can grant these feats to an ally within 30 feet who can see and hear him. Allies retain the use of these feats for three rounds plus one round for every two Inquisitor levels the Tactic Leader has. So it would be four rounds. I do like it. We're going to get that. So get that. And holy shit, we are just amazing at everything. Uh, keep going with Persuasion and the ones we're good at. And then I guess we'll go with Athletics still and... We'll keep going with nature. Maybe we should start putting some in religion, but I guess we're already we're already putting some in nature, so we'll keep going with that. Get our teamwork feet, so we already have a few of them, right? I think we already have shield wall, which is why we can't acquired ability. There we go. So we have outflank and shield wall already. So let's, what else would we get? Uh, so this increases our CMD. Uh, on combat maneuver checks, precise strike. Whenever you and an ally also have, who also has his feet are flanking the same creature, you get an additional 1d6 points of precision damage with each successful melee attack. Sponge damage stacks with other sources of precision damage and sneak attack. That's kind of cool. We could uh, do that pretty well with um, Wolchif and Grabor. And everybody has a melee. Melee, that'd be good. Whenever you are adjacent to one or more allies who have this feat, you gain a plus one bonus on saving throws. I think we're going to get precise strike. And we also get a new spell. Uh, a new level one spell. Okay, let's go ahead and get... Remove fear. And we don't. We're probably not going to use any of these very often, besides maybe Bless. But we don't have a lot of choices. Alright, so we are level 10 Hell Knight, level 5 Armager, and level 3 Tactical Leader. I like it. Complete. Alright, and everybody's leveled up, so we're going to go ahead and level everybody up. 
Richelet, a level 18 espionage expert. You get combat style feat. And are you getting another spells? No, you're just getting more spells. What is this one? Espionage master. That's going to be fun. We're only two levels away from max level. Granted, we're probably going to take a long time to level now. If we picked the legend path, we would have been leveling more often. Boom, 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 and boom. There you go. We have a lot of people that are good at uh, persuasion. Okay, so we could get skill focus or archery. Point blank master. Choose one type of ranged weapon. You do not provoke attacks or opportunity when firing the selected weapon while threatened. Or we could get improved critical. We don't have improved critical already? Why don't we have that? Why is this not recommended? Would we like to get any of these? I don't really see the, the need for this too much. I mean, it's been, it's so rare that one of them, somebody comes within range. We've got critical focus. We do have improved critical longbow already, so that's why we don't need this, because we can't get longbow, right? Unless you can take this multiple times. No. Okay. Well, in that case, I guess we'll get Point Blink Master. Right? I mean, there's not... I guess these aren't bad either, but... Unless any of these are good for combat or prerequisites. Hmm... Let's get her Iron Will. That way, you know, mind affecting stuff won't hurt her so badly. Yeah, I don't really care about Point Blank Master. Maybe that's a mistake, but I don't really see the need for it. Grey Boar. Level 18 a Slayer. You get more sneak attack and a Slayer talent. This is your last sneak attack bonus. Mm-hmm. Cool. And you get those three. Alright, so your Slayer talent. What are we going to get for you here? Crippling Strike. Opponents with such precision uh, that the blows weaken and hamper. Two strength damage. That could be good. Skill Mastery. Now, Crip Slippery Mind. That's a pretty good one, I think. I don't actually know how good your your um what you call it's that or is though your uh, dexterity. I'm assuming it's good. Dirty trick has a bonus feat. What does dirty trick do? This feat uh da da da. Perform dirty trick combat maneuver. Our skills. A plus two bonus to C and B when performing this maneuver, and a plus two. Okay, uh, I'm not too concerned about that. Painful Strike. Uh, automatically gains his talent. A creature that takes sneak attack damage from an executioner must make a successful fortitude save. 10 plus half the executioner's class level plus his intelligence modifier because sickened. Mystery Seeker, jump up. Uh, a rogue with this talent does not provoke, provoke attacks or opportunity when standing up from prone. That's not bad. Hunter Surprise. Once per day, a rogue with this talent can designate a single enemy she is adjacent to as her prey. Uh, sneak attack to all damage to all. She can add her sneak attack damage to all attacks made against her prey, even if she is not flanking. Okay. The character is confused and hits a creature with a melee attack. The, the sneak attack is no longer confused. Okay. We could get a familiar. Crippling strike. I like Crippling Strike. Confounding Blade. The target cannot take make a text of two unity. Okay, Combat Trick. Okay, so we could get one of these. Like Blinding Critical or... That, no. What would we get here if we got this? We could get Precise Strike, which Barrett has. We could get more critical stuff. 
Hmm. I'm not really sure what to get you, Greybore. I also can't say that I'm going to use you a whole lot either. A character who selects this feat get trait gains the blinding critical as a bonus feat. I think I like crippling strike. I think we're gonna get crippling strike. If 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 he hits a lot, which he does hit a lot at this point, he could drain a lot of strength from somebody. So hopefully that's good. All right, Darren. I wonder what's gonna happen to you if we get rid of your Oracle uh, Master person. Get access to level nine spells here. That's pretty awesome. All right, your level nine spell. You don't have a whole lot of choices here. We're obviously gonna get heal mass. There you go. Ninia. Scroll Savant. Nothing this level. Probably just more level nine spells. Nope, just more all the other spells, which is fine. Get those knowledge skills up. All right, your level nine spell this time around is going to be... Shades. The spell functions like Shadow Conjuration. Yeah, let's get Shades. Oh, we get two spells. All right, and then our other one, Dominate Monster, maybe? Make any humanoid creature fight on your side as if it was your ally. Let's get Dominate Monster. Wiljif. Level 18. You get the last level of your danger sense. Um, it is, so traps. Helps you with traps. Get your stuff up. Oh, not that one. Uh, did I miss one? There we go. And then level 6 spells here. Let's get you. Dragon kind? That could be fun. Elemental body. Sure, let's get that. And. I don't really think getting the uh, ones that affect your. Well, maybe, like, I don't know. Bear's Endurance could be good. Yeah, it gives us more health. Let's get that one, too. Our Transmutation Boy. Sila. Good old Sila. Level 18 Paladin. You get your last Mercy. There you go, and for this mercy, let's see. I don't think any of these are new. I think we're gonna get poisoned. Since we still have a little bit of a chance whenever we have to dispel poisons with the treat injury stuff, let's get that so we can get rid of poisons more reliably. I think that's a good one. Okay. Man, we have so many characters. And we killed some of them. Uh, level 18 Zen Archer. You get your final Archer bonus feat. And you still have another key power to get. But that's okay. That's, I mean, that's not... Oh, that, that's great. It's not just okay. It's great. Uh, and nature. Okay. Key power. Uh, that's kind of nice. Let's see, are there any new ones? So this one's level 14. So these are all 14. Uh, and spell resistance. That could be good. Cold strike. Or key shout. I kind of like key poison. Let's get that. Or sudden speed. This one, no, 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 we don't want that. Wholeness of body. 
Yeah, that could be good. Could be able to heal himself. And then here, so we've already got all of these apparently. Although why don't I don't understand why these are are not wanted. Uh, you can fire one additional time this round at your highest bonus. All your attack rolls take a minus two penalty with rapid shot. Uh, you can hit. Uh, your first attack fires two arrows. I don't know why these are... I wish it told you why it's not recommended. We don't need Deflect Arrow. I'm assuming we already have Improved Critical Longbow. Yeah. Once per round, when you would normally be hit by an attack from a ranged weapon, you may deflect it, so you take no... I guess this could be good. It's rare that he's going to be attacked, but they, they, they are not recommending these, so I'm not going to get him. I'll get the Flecked Arrow. I think that's more useful for, like, a, a frontline monk, but... You never know. Maybe uh, there could definitely be a time when... Um, Lan is the last one left. Okay, so Ember gets level 9 spells here, and she gets a Grand Hex. At 18 level, and every two levels are after, a witch can choose a Grand Hex. Cool. So we're going to have new Hexes to choose from. What do we have? Life Giver. Once per day, the witch can, as a full round action, touch a dead creature and bring it back to life. This functions as a resurrection, but, doesn't, but does not require a material component. Oh, geez, that's amazing. I feel like that's going to be what we get. Although an Animal Servant, which can use this Hex to turn a humanoid enemy into an animal and rob it of its free will. Jesus. Death curse. The hexed creature receives a will save to negate the effect. If the save is failed, the creature becomes fatigued the first round of the hex. On the second round of the hex, the creature becomes exhausted. The third round, the creature dies or later rest. The witch may target a single undead creature with its hex as if it was an undeath spell. Uh, whether this save is successful whether or not it's successful, a creature cannot be targeted of this of this hex. Be the target of this hex again for one round. Okay. I think we'll be getting a life giver. For her hex. Because that's just amazing. Have we... I think we started switching going for her... Her religion. And then... Where is it? Where is it at? There it is. Give me that. That's what I'm talking about. All right, and then level nine spell for her. Heroic Invocation. This is a, a burst one. That's pretty good. I do like that. There's no, there's no fire spell at this level for her, huh? Mind Blank Communal. Oof, I feel like we should get that. It's a shame that the this is cold damage. Hmm. Let's get my blank communal. There we go. And she can res people. With a hex. That's amazing. Alright. Trevor. A level 8 barbarian armored hulk. At this level, you are going to get... What are your other ones? Two-handed fighters and a hell knight. And a paladin. You're all over the place, buddy. Oh, look at that thing. That looks cool. Devastating blow. Anyway, uh, for this, we get a rage power. I wonder how big of a detriment it is to his overall skill being so spread out like this. Okay, did we get any new rage powers at this level? I'm not sure. We get a totem. Two While raging, the barbarian gains two claw attacks. These attacks are considered primary attacks. They're made at the barbarian's full base attack bonus. These claws deal 1d6 points of slashing damage, plus the barbarian's strength modifier. Totem rage powers grant powers related to a theme. 
barbarian can not select from more than one group of totem rage powers. For example, a barbarian who selects a beast totem rage power cannot choose to select a dragon totem rage. Okay. So we got beast. I, I think I want a totem power. Celestial. Demon. Fiend. Those are our four. Our four to choose from. Uh, whenever this barbarian is subject to a spell or non-spell healing effect that causes cures hit point damage, she heals one additional point of damage per her, her character level. Eh. While raging, the barbarian gets a plus two bonus on saving throws against acid damage, effect, death effects, disease, and poison. Two large pair of large horns, getting a gore attack. I like beast totem. Yeah, give it, give us some, give us some claw attacks. And then we do get this. Yeah, we're gonna go with Beast Totem. Just checking to see if there's anything else we'd want. Nah, I like Beast Totem. We're going for it. He's a beast. Plus it adds his strength to those, which is plus eight. So I think that's gonna work out pretty well for him. I hope. Alright, two more people. Sasio. Uh we're definitely going to respec you, so maybe I won't even do this one. Uh, yeah, let's just hold off on Saucio. We'll, we'll, we'll respec him. Is it, are we, are we either going to make him a full cleric, or somebody suggested maybe an inquisitor? I'll take a look at that. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not I'm not too... I'm not too... I'm not feeling the, the war priest. I think it was a cool idea, but I don't think it's really paid off as, as much. He just doesn't do enough damage to really make him good as a damage dealer and because he's a war priest it's kind of hampered his spell casting abilities and he's just not really great at anything now all right fearsome Le leader level 12 you get a bonus feat and demanding challenge at 12th level whenever a cavalier declares a challenge his target must pay attention to the threat he poses as long as the target is within the threatened area of the cavalier it takes a minus two penalty to its ac from attacks made by anyone other than the cavalier That's actually really good. I think. Alright, Reggie. For your bonus feat. Dodge could be good. Double slice. Does this work with his weapon? I don't know. Did we get... Yeah, we got mounted combat before, right? So now we could get, like, spirited charge. You deal double damage with a melee weapon. I do like that one. I think we might get that one. Where's the other one? I thought there was three we could choose from for mounted combat here. Yeah, mounted shield. Where's that one at? Is it... No, oh, no. I think we're going to get spirit to charge, though. Deal double damage with melee weapons. Yeah, I like it. Okay, let's level up our horses. So this is Zenith, level 18 bully. There you go. And Demon Bane. Level 17 bulwark. Why are you a level behind? Actually, don't know why he's level behind. And for this, let's go ahead and get you... Something good, something cool, something great, something like critical focus. Hit more. Let's get critical. Yeah, I like critical focus. Get it. All right. Let's head on down to the streets. I guess we could have gone back to the tavern. I probably would have been smarter. Okay, let's go to back to the half measure tavern because I think Graybore's there. I think we'll finish off the episode with a, a little chat with Graybore, see if he has anything to say. I doubt he does because most of our other companions haven't had anything to say. Uh, although I'm sure Trevor does. I hope Trevor has something new to say. 
He's back in Dresden, back on uh, the material plane. Maybe Saucio will too, because Trevor's there. And then... I don't know if anybody else will have anything to say. Maybe Sila will comment about the, uh, the soulless people that we still have to save. Uh, okay. Great boar. Where you at, buddy? There you are. You little demon. Alright, nothing to say. Besides punishing him. And, uh, we're not gonna punish him yet. We're using him. He's a tool to be used. Alright, well, that's going to be it for this episode. In the next episode, we will finish up in Dresden. And then probably head out to the Hell Knights. But we have confirmed our love with Arushale, and we are now officially together. She's also been freed of her demonic corruption, which is awesome. Has she changed from... Nope, she's still chaotic good, which makes sense, I guess. Uh, but she's got a new thing here. Awesome. Or we need to get rid of this stuff for her, but we'll do that later. Oh my god, her wisdom. Jesus. Minus 11 ability drain there. That's crazy. Okay. That's it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, until the next one, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you later.